Okay. Am I not a robot now? Is that is that better? Jesus. Am I is this better? Is this better? Testing, testing. Am I is this better? Is this All right, thank God. Jesus. Okay. Well, let's do that over again. My god. I should have just hit net, like home. Instead of just this drag. Okay, there we go. Um, okay. And yeah, I do want to get rid of that. All right. Well, uh, let's do that over again without the robot voice. Arc 20, last, chapter 10. The mood was somber. We stood in the midst of a war zone, with holes in the ceiling, holes in the building exterior, and wind whistling through those holes and down hallways. Everywhere, bloodstains marked where people had bled more than 20% of their blood volume and likely died, and there were pieces of broken or dismantled tinker tech lying around that were cordoned off with more seriousness than the cracks in the ceiling that still shed chunks of concrete, or the holes in the floor large enough to drop a truck through. The only fighting was in words, and those words weren't shouts, not really. A few loud people, but many more people were remaining quiet out of respect for the dead, though the deaths hadn't happened yet. Depending on where they stood on buying into this plan, the o those dead quiet out of respect for the dead, though the deaths hadn't 
Depending on where they stood on buying into this plan, those dead could be us, a majority of the capes who wore costumes and masks, or a minority share of those same capes, if the person arguing was an optimist. Among those who didn't believe the plan would work at all, the relative hush and the subdued, respectful tones were for the trillions who would die for humanity. The Seamorg was after had her. She had wanted to enslave humanity, bringing us, bringing us all. The Seamorg was out of action. Sleeper had her. She had wanted to enslave humanity all into her siren call. From there, we, 99.9% .9 of us, if Chris was to be believed, would have been stuck in roles she had prescribed for us. I'd already felt the impact of that, just in the span of the raid on this facility. That had been one decision, and we'd ultimately opted out of it. She'd chosen her option, and two members of Breakthrough were gone. Couldn't imagine that being every decision. Everything decided according to the whims of a monster that had killed millions and done untold damage on other fronts. We were free, out from beneath that thumb. Maybe we were under the Titan Fortuna's thumb now because of it. I couldn't rule out that the agent had influenced things in that direction before she took power to back down the stairs and... Actually, I'm going to re redo that one. That reflection. thumb. Maybe we were under the Titan Fortuna's thumb now because of it. I couldn't rule out that the agent had influenced things in that direction before she took power. I looked back down the stairs, at the scene we were retreating from. The crowd had gathered at the edge of one of our earlier battlefields. Capes who we'd been... Capes who we'd... Man, I am flubbing all over the place today. ...retreating from. The crowd had gathered at the edge of one of our earlier battlefields. Capes who we'd just been trying to communicate with were gathered around Defiant, Dragon, and Chevalier. The Dragon and two Knights. The simple act of Defiant offering me his hand, and the fact Chevalier had been on board, it was helping people turn the corner. I was okay with that. It was a roll, Capes, a handsome costume, a pretty mask, and a person with presence and personal power. It helped cut through the bullshit sometimes. A double-edged sword, obviously, when people like Scribe had used it for the wrong cause or interests. But it had also let Legend and Stonewall nudge things further along, faster. The optimist in me hoped that we shut down the ugly, like we'd stomped out the worst of the fallen, like how Empire 88's back had broken. Meanwhile... The better causes had forked and thrived. I really hoped that what we were doing today would have its positive forks, but worst possibilities. Fortuna, and what Fortuna was doing. Our plan now was to get in between the point Fortuna completed her plan and the point everything blew up. Valkyrie had brought us Riley. Riley had brought the formula. Now... It was a question of getting people to take it, to fill that space with dreams and death. Where do we even begin? Rain asked. We were up near the third floor. I could see the marks left behind where powers had been used, where lasers had gouged walls or fixtures had broken, a camouflaged cabinet for a stark white fire extinguisher hanging halfway out of the wall. A part of me hoped people would line up, I admitted. We don't have a lot of time. I'm reminded of an article I read, Sveta said. The mom gets pregnant, doesn't realize for a bit, gets the test, tells her best friend, then tells her partner. He reacts badly or is in shock. You have to remember, he hasn't had the benefit of quietly getting used to it, getting counsel, whatever. Same when the baby hits. For the mom, she's been living with the baby for nine months. For the dad, he starts living with the baby at birth. I 
I made a bit of a face. Not sure I like that. It gives too much of a pass. But we are living with it. We already wrapped our heads around it, Sveta said. They are still coming to terms with the idea. I held out my arm. I could feel it on my skin, in my muscle, and a thrum, like the point something vibrated to the touch, but no longer made a sound or moved with that vibration. Semiramis had wound back the clock for parts of my body. It was localized, incomplete, but it kept me going enough to see this through, I hoped. The pain in my collarbone and ribs wasn't as severe. Fractures instead of breaks. Bruising around the bones instead of fractures. If it weren't for that, I worried that vibration would have been unbearable, or it would have shaken me to pieces like an earthquake and a derelict house. We don't have a lot of time, Rain echoed me. We don't have much opportunity to convince people to get on board. I don't know if it's our job, unless we're talking about... Sp I said. The wardens are on it, I think. We reached the fourth floor. I saw Crystal Clear partway down a side hallway and raised my hand in greeting. Victoria, he called out. I flew closer to him, because flying was better than walking, and even though I was better, walking hurt. He was with two capes. I recognized them as Typhlosis, who had been at the Broken Trigger event before I'd joined Breakthrough, and Ratcatcher. Fear extended a hand my way. I can't exactly return a handshake right now, not without giving you the lowdown. Words gotten around, he said. Only his mouth betrayed any expression, as crystals jutted from his eye sockets, forehead, and upper face, forming a craggy look atop his head where hair would be. Some of the crystals were bloody. You got the full rundown? I asked him. I don't want you to go into this... blind. Dumb line. When two of the people present didn't have proper eyes. Crystals. And Typhlosis had eyes with concentric rings of glowing irises, each rotating in different directions, periodically, flipping a... Oh, I don't think there's supposed to be a comma there. Periodically flipping around on some axis or another. Okay. Crystals and Typhlosis had eyes with concentric rings of glowing irises, each rotating in different directions, period, axis or another. There were no pupils, only small holes through which I could see the inside of her head, illuminated by the soft glow. Her blindfold hung around her neck. Typhlosis snorted a bit, at least. Her reaction might have been different if I hadn't winced at my own wording. We got the rundown. Last in, first out, spread out. That there's no guarantee this works on multiple levels. It won't work, Ratcatcher said. Sorry. We don't have time to dwell too much on every single person, Rain said. Just... The Norfair thing was a turning point before I turned to Crystal Clear. I respected what you guys were doing. I'm confident this will work out, Crystal Clear said. He'd dropped his hand, raised it a bit when I looked at him to look into his, er, crystals, while he spoke. People fuck sometimes, Ratcatcher said. You'll have to fight to get them to listen. Will you do this with us? I asked her. Bad dreams, and then I die. Complicated dreams, I told her. Not always bad. Well, so that maybe we pollute what their idea of bad is. Maximizing connections between us, digging into old relationships... Capes we've known who passed, so we can pollute them as well. If nothing else about this works, maybe we change things for the next civilization these aliens run into. How many of the dreams will be bad? Some? A lot? Percent? More than 50%, I told Ratcatcher. 
Beyond that, the dreams you have. Oh, 99% bad. Typhlosis blinked, and one of her irises was mid-flip when she did it, so her eyelid bulged around the protrusion. Her expression was sad. I don't know what to tell you, I told Ratcatcher. I'm allowed to say no? Yeah, I said, and I felt sad saying it. There's nobody to look after my rats if I go, she said. We have contacts, staff, Crystal Clear said. We could send someone around to your place. She said, hugging her arms to her chest. She was wearing a dusty sweatshirt, carrying equipment. I wondered if she'd be... Oh. My cursor was covering up the period. They'll wonder where I went, she said, hugging her arms to her chest. She was wearing a dusty sweatshirt, carrying equipment. I wondered if she'd been doing search and rescue. The plan is that we each go, Crystal Clear said. We spread out to get better coverage. We sleep for a bit, and then, um... We croak, Ratcatcher said. Crystal Clear looked uncomfortable at that. Point is, I am going to go out to the Norfair area, a bit north of there. It's where I stayed after arriving in Gimmel. I've got family out there in the old tent city. I don't know if smells or familiar voices will get through, but, yeah, we could take you to wherever you've got your pets. I swallowed. No familiar voices for me. Ratcatcher said. I have no friends, just my rats. I consider you a friend, Crystal Clear said. I saw her draw in a deep breath and sigh. Rain's arm scraped against the wall as he shifted posture. Crystal Clear half turned his head. You don't have to stay, Antares. Just, uh, give me what you have to give me. Crystal Clear extended his hand, turned quite my direction. I looked at it. It didn't waver. Unless you aren't comfortable, he told me. I have to be. I'm the one who pushed for this, I said. I reached out and gave his hand a squeeze. I can see it, Ratcatcher said. Tiny movements of tinier hairs. All over your hand, your face. Crystal Clear nodded. Come, Ratcatcher said. You can give a girl a kiss on the cheek, or hold her hand if you're thicken. She pushed her mask a bit aside. There was scar tissue on her cheek and chin. Her hand reached out and her pet mouse poked its nose out of the sleeve. I should warn you, last in, first out, it means the further down the chain, the faster it takes effect. I know, Ratcatcher said. I'll thicken out or do something stupid if I don't hurry it up. Crystal Clear took her hand in his, leaned over, and gave her a kiss where the mask had previously covered the side of her face. Fucking heavy, Ratcatcher said. Her hand tremored as she withdrew it. She turned her rat mask with the crooked nose to look down the length of the hallway behind her, as if she expected to see somewhere an answer or, or a distraction from this present moment. Typhlosis reached out with a hand toward Crystal Clear. I could, if you wanted more time to get where you're going, I told her. She shook her head. Crystal Clear extended a hand toward her, and she laid her hand in his momentarily. She withdrew it with as much or with as much or more care. Crystal Clear extended a hand toward her, and she laid her hand in his momentarily. 
She withdrew it. Pfft. Withdrew it. O'Clear extended a hand toward her, and she laid her hand in his momentarily. She withdrew it with as much or more care than she'd set it down. Tyfe is helping keep track of who we've gotten to, Crystal Clear said. Wardens have resources. The big teams are organizing. Foresight's got to we're hoping to get to in the next thirty to sixty minutes. And we've got to get where we're going, Typhlosis said. And make arrangements for stuff like Ratcatcher's pet rats. You want to get moving, then, I said. We'd better, Crystal Clear said. Is this... Oh. You want to get moving, then, I said. We... Crystal Clear said. Is a goodbye appropriate? Too much? I don't know, I said. But thanks for making this easier. Whatever happens, if this works or doesn't work, I'm glad I crossed paths with you, Antares. Likewise. The parting of ways wasn't as graceful as a... We were going in the same direction. We headed back toward the stairs in two barely separate groups, me joining Rain and Sveta, crystal clear with Ratcatcher and Typhlosis. When we reached the stairwell and they turned to go down, crystal clear gave me a little wave, like the wave I'd given him earlier. That was now three more people. I couldn't bring myself to move forward as I processed it all. Sveta touched my arm, and I flinched at the contact. I met her eyes. Anywhere you need to go? Anyone you want to see? In a way. I'm glad Weld and I agreed for me to be the scapegoat with the Irregulars. He's handling... I don't necessarily mean for the plan... I told her. If or when we get everyone, or get mostly everyone, where do you want to be? Is there anyone you want to be with? I want to find a nice rocky spot down by the water, she said. Do you want company? No, she said. Is this because of the bite? Because I was on edge, my power was weird, it... No, Sveta said. I felt refusal and and rejection didn't help. No, Sveta said again. If there was more time, or if I knew I'd have a chance to move somewhere else, to have another place, I'd have a sit on my own, and I'd spend some time with you. But I have to choose one, and I think, unless you really want my company, I'd like to have a moment of quiet. I can understand that, Rain said. I wasn't sure. Sveta seemed to read my mind. She met my eyes. I spent so long fighting me. Then I got a body, the prosthetic one. It felt like a crutch. The one Bao gave me felt like a cheat or an illusion. The Seamorg scared me, but I feel like I can make peace with this. I'd like to sit with that peace for a bit. And you like the water? I told her. I do. Breakthrough. I know why now. You are my best friend, you know. Your family. I don't want to end this. And you're my best friend, Sveta said. Really? As infuriating as you can be. I wanted to say something more, but the words escaped me. What about you, Rain? Sveta asked. Aaron? Erin's with Lachlan, Rain said. I haven't really been in touch with her. Chastity? I asked. That feels weird, he admitted. You like her, don't you? I think. She's funny. She's nice. A little intense, even if that's the pot calling the kettle black. But holding each other before everything goes dark seems... Like a lot for a first date. Sveta snorted. I'm not being weird, right? He asked. Sound he trailed off. Two normal arms and one mechanical arm raised up a bit, then flopped to his side. I 
don't know if it matters, I said. I'll think about it. Come on. There's people to check on, I said. I'm jump beat here. Also, hail hydrate. I'm jump beat here. The room was filled with monitors, and the monitors glowed red, mapping out the spreading cracks, the glow of the land beneath the cracks. Different clocks showed different countdowns. Hey, Kenzie said, sounding very lighthearted. She swiveled in her chair, and her face was hidden by her mask. Hey, I told her, quiet. You got dosed? She asked. I nodded. Dose me? I... That takes a lot more discussion first. Okay. Um, I'm keeping tabs on things. We've got a whole bunch of capes trying to make sure we cover all the bases, contact everyone we need to talk to. Where are we at? I asked. Thirty percent. Thirty percent of capes, as far as we can tell. That many? The wardens decided they had to force a few. I snapped to attention at that. What? Who? Capes in prison. The most dangerous ones. Monokeros was one of them. They had a dialogue about it, and they decided there was too much danger. That the heroes all die and the villains stay? Kenzie nodded with vigor. Okay. Just the most dangerous ones, then. You mean monsters, not villains. Yep. Um, Rain? Love Lost and Colt joined up. Makes sense, Rain said. Good. Is there a list of names? I asked. I at desk while being careful to stay out of Kenzie's arm's reach. There was an organization of names floating in three-dimensional space, connected by diagrams that looked almost like Capricorn's constellations. I couldn't make heads or tails of it. It's organized by points in space, so... Kenzie said. My sister? Oh, I got video footage. I don't need to see... But she was already pulling it up. Already projecting it onto the wall. I watched as my mother and father stood on one end of the room. Marquis and Panacea stood on the other. No audio, sorry, Kenzie told me. I didn't need audio. I could fill in the words very easily. The protest, the little head shake. It made sense she wouldn't want to do this, wouldn't want to make that point of contact. Ironic. It was Darnall who entered the room. He remained at the door, and the camera didn't show a good view of his face, but it was clear he was talking. I could see it, the shift in stance, the break in protests. It took words, possibly because he and she had exchanged so many words over the past twenty-four hours. I hadn't nearly... I hadn't had nearly enough. Probably because he and she had exchanged so many words over over the past twenty-four hours. I hadn't had nearly enough sessions with the man, but I, I could imagine his tone, though words to break through, through Amy's stubbornness eluded me. Unfortunately, Marquis could see the shift in posture and expression as well as any of us could. I watched the recording as Amy took a step forward and was blocked by an eruption of offensive bone. She touched it, and the wall broke. Marquis dropped to his knees. She walked unimpeded to my parents. It was my dad who brushed hair away from her face, touching her forehead. I saw Amy's posture change. There was an exchange glad I couldn't hear it. Then she crossed the room to walk over to Darnall. The image froze as she disappeared from view. I released a breath I hadn't realized I'd been holding. My parents had the effect. They'd passed it to her. 
that was that. Couldn't use her power on herself, unless something dramatic had changed when we'd cracked the crystal. Speaking of... The crystal? I asked. Doing outreach, Lookout said. Aunt Sarah? Protecting Riley Davis. Okay, I said. Okay. And Chris? They're going to hunt him down. Yeah. He was spreading half-truths, and they asked Jessica, who asked Riley, who said he was a problem. They'll imprison him and take away his stuff if they can. Jessica said to, I think, as a compromise. Okay, I said. She swiveled in my direction, and I quickly took a half-step, half-fly back. Right at the beginning, the promise was that you wouldn't leave me my life. I've been le left behind, or ignored, or... Bringing you with isn't a good thing if we're taking you to a bad place, or an ending, I said. Leaving me behind isn't a good thing either, she said. In so many ways, she was precocious. She was smart for her age. She had a work ethic that a squadron of 55-year-olds wouldn't have, or 35-year-olds, what... Why did I say 55? He said. In so many ways, she was precocious. She was smart for her age. She had a work ethic that a squadron of 35-year-olds wouldn't have. She was, unfortunately, advanced for her age when it came to relationships and the kinds of things of... Things or dynamics, damn it. For her age, she had a work ethic that a squadron... 35-year-olds wouldn't have. She was, unfortunately, advanced when it came to relationships and the kinds of things or dynamics she might get entangled in. In other ways, she was a teenager. There wasn't a rational argument I could make that she would accept. There wasn't an emotional argument I could make that would budge that heart of hers. No, I told her. Sorry echoed me. Okay, she said brightly. She swiveled, turning to the computer. I've got important stuff to do anyway. I don't know if you want to have a conversation. Nope. Make preparations, Rain asked. I'm preparing right now, doing stuff. What if we asked you to step away from the tech? Disengage? This It's a lot. Kenzie turned back my way. The eyes etched into her round mask stared at me. I don't want you to regret... Oh. Kenzie turned back my way. The eyes etched into her round mask stared at me. I don't want you to regret not talking with us now, years from now, I told her. Because part of the reason we're doing this is to give you those years. And people like you. And people without powers. Back to her, her work. No, it's fine. I'm busy. You can't avert this. There's no fix. There's no tweak. It's not... I know. No, that's fine. I'm busy. Kenzie said, firm, her hands at the keyboard. You don't want... I don't. More emotion. No, that's fine. I'm busy. Kenzie said, firm her hands at the keyboard. You don't want... I don't, she said, with more emotion, her skinny arms tense. Are you okay? I... Oh, nope, I missed a line there. Want... I don't, she said, with more emotion, her skinny arms tense. Kenzie stared at the screen. Are you okay? I asked. You had a freakout earlier. Then you seemed to rally. Being away from your tech seemed to help. Talking with Gru helped some, she said. But... She trailed off. But what? Sveta asked. Victoria, do you remember one time you were complaining you never get the benefit of a doubt, Victoria? From your parents? From people when you were trying to warn them about Amy? Well... Victoria? From your parents? From people when you were trying to warn them about Amy? With the diary thing and teacher's propaganda? I've said not to you, I don't think. 
I picked it up somewhere. My point is, I'd really like that benefit of a doubt right now. I know a lot of what I do is my fault, but a lot of what I do... A lot of what I deal with. I picked it up somewhere. My point is, I'd really like that benefit of a doubt right now. I know a lot of what I do is my fault, but a lot of what I deal with is also because when I tell people stuff, they assume I'm... I don't know. That I've been coached. That I had intentions. Or they think about themselves first. I know. It's always been a juggling act, trying to give you the ability to make decisions and keeping you safe. I'm safe sitting at my computer. I need to be sitting at my computer, because the portal tech is still a thing people might need one day, and I need it to not blow up, and stuff I can't tell you, and I'm not going to freak out. I promise. If I was going to, it would be because Juliet froze Roman so Chicken Little Candy and Darlene could touch him and get the effect. Well, technically, it was Chicken Little doing it. Then Darlene did it because he did, and Candy joined in after. Fuck, I said. Does Tattletail know? Nope. Kenzie said brightly. She's going to shit herself. She'll be so mad. But I'm calm. See? I'm okay. Because it's Breakthrough's plan, and I trust it's the best option. So I'm going to do my thing. Then I'm going to see how things go, with as clear a view of it all as anyone could possibly get. Do you want anyone around? I asked. I could get you over there. Nope. Imp called Charlotte and Forrest. They're going to come here to help look after the gang while they're asleep. They can keep me company. Really, you don't need to worry about me. She tapped her screen. I walked over to look. Imp, Gru, Perrion, and Foil were all in the room. Imp had an arm around Juliet's throat while sitting on a table behind the girl. As a kind of improvised headlock had a hand on Roman's shoulder, off to the side, talking, were... It's a different sentence. Its throat, while sitting on a table behind the girl, revised headlock. Gru had a hand on Roman's shoulder, off to the side, talking and foil. They were together in these tense moments, where skin hummed with the promise of what was to come, and where monitors glowed red, showing the creeping cracks, the landscape turning to crystal at the edges of the cracks. I'm going to wrap up here, shut everything down, maybe, so it's safe no matter what happens. Then I'll just watch. Kenzie. I'll give you guys calls on your cell phone, between the time the people on the second rung and the people on the first rung start passing out. Promise. I worry, I said. You're going to turn around and go to Chicken Little. If I was going to do that, I would have done it already. If I was planning to do it later... Use projections and test spend the time you have remaining chasing me. That's pretty damning, Rain said. That you're already thinking that way. I'm always thinking this way. But if you really want to make me feel better about all of this, I'd like to look after Breakthrough. Look after how? I asked. Ashley's freaking out. Byron's sitting on the roof and hasn't been dosed. Um, and Natalie's driving and it's a little shaky with the state of the roads. I'm keeping tab on... ...been dosed. Um, and... Natalie's driving, and it's a little shaky with the state of the roads. I'm keeping tabs on her car's dashboard. Damsel is freaking? I asked. I'm dealing with her. Here. I gave the screen one last look before I hurried off. Thirty-two percent. Insert time jump beat here. You're afraid, her voice rang through the large hallway. Wardens stood in a loose formation at either end of the hallway. I'm the most terrifying of you, and it's all your own doing. Ashley, I called out. Damsel spun on her heels. She almost lost her balance. Her bladed hands were extended out in either direction, facing the two groups that had her surrounded. Holding her arms outstretched seemed to be a task, and she was breathing hard, the hands faltering, rising up again. When she took a step, 
it was with a bit of a limp. Oh, Antares, you petty, stupid little thing, she said. What's up? I asked. Oh, I'm on my way up, rest assured. It's so convenient when all of your enemies decide, what more could a lady ask for, hmm? She raised her chin. And in the aftermath, who is left to stop me from ruling? Conveying the presence you need to rule is like being cool in high school. I said, if you talk too much about how cool you are, you're going to convince people of the opposite. And what would you know about poise or presence? She asked. Look at you, haggard, bloody. I'm doing a lot better than I was. Funny thing, if you make the right contacts, meet the right people, you get healing, you get help. How's that foot of yours? Oh, it's sore. A small battlefield injury. But in a matter of days, you'll be dead after pissing yourself in a nightmare-filled sleep, she told me. And I'll mend, waited on hand and foot, dressed in the finest clothes available. Fucking city in ruins, not much available, one of the wardens said. Send? What? Fucking city in ruins, not much available. Uh, I'll re-say that. And waited on hand and foot, dressed in the finest clothes available. Fucking cities in ruins, not much available, one of the wardens said. I'll manage. I've always managed. And do what? I asked her. Your team? Deathchester? Are they sticking around? They'll come around. We did well enough when I led. They'll come back. Four members of death... <clears throat> They'll come around. We did well enough when I led. They'll come back. Four members of Deathchester had agreed to make contact. The rest had left, frustrated with Damsel's ranting. I hadn't asked that question without knowing the answer. A good, good rule of thumb for a lawyer, taught to me by a lawyer parent. Back! She barked out the word. Mm. Back! I think I blew out there. Answer. A good rule of thumb for a lawyer, taught to me by a lawyer parent. Back! She barked out the word. Her power lashed out, and she made a quick circle with her claws, shaping it as it rolled out. No, shaping it as it rolled out. I am stumbling a lot right now. To me by a lawyer parent. Back! She barked out the word. <clears throat> her power lashed out, and she made a quick circle with her claws, shaping it as it rolled out. It became a circular whirl, spinning about twenty feet down the other end of the hallway before losing momentum and dissipating. The edges of it had raked floor, ceiling, and walls, damaging a door. But what comes next? I asked. After you rule the ruins, a bit of petty looting? Running from the heroes and authorities? All it takes is one bullet. I've been shot before. I'll live. There's an alternative. Oh, oh it's Kenzie. Okay. Running from the heroes and authorities? All it takes is one bullet. I've been shot before. I'll live. There's an alternative. Tea? Chats? The voice that spoke wasn't mine. Fuck you, child. There's a reason you're so unloved. Hanging out? Using tech to work out the coolest costume stuff? Glowing, smoking eyes? And I could do stuff with your claws? giving them cool effects. I'll keep my response succinct. Have they taught you that word in school yet, brat? Damsel used her power, a lash. I pulled back, dragging one of the more heavily armored capes back and away. Kenzie remained in the line of fire. The power licked her, grazed her. She flickered and remained where she was. 
Kenzie continued. There'd be no running, not much danger. Same deal I offered Swansong. Damsel used her power again, lunging forward. A beam from one of the capes clipped her, knocking her off course, but her forward momentum was a lot. I sent the fragile one forward, low and close to the corner, invisible. Beneath the fragile one's fingernails, I had my own blood. It should transmit the effect, but... She blasted the projection of Kenzie and everything near Kenzie. It did nothing. Ashley, come on! Kenzie said, sounding mildly put out at worst. This is not a hard decision. Damsel raised a claw, poised like she was going to slash Kenzie. She looked down at Kenzie. Kenzie's projection looked up at her. For a moment, it looked like an impossible decision, a paralyzing one. I miss you more than almost anything, Kenzie said. Ashley dropped her hand, the claw clacking against the floor. The worst thing about the world ending is I might not get to see more of you, Kenzie said. The tone had shifted. Capes adjusted their footing. Armor creaked. I hated every little sound, because I worried it might set things off again, disturbing the moment. Ashley looked off to one side. You shouldn't admit to weakness. It's unbecoming. Right, Kenzie said. I'll keep that in mind. Ashley looked down the hall at me, then back down at Kenzie. The harder we try to be strong, the weaker we are. I know. It's sort of the same here, Kenzie replied, nodding. It's kind of at the heart of the plan, I said from a distance. Accepting that sometimes we have to be weak, step down, take us. Ashley nodded. I'm still getting used to that, Kenzie admitted. Are they taking care of you? Ashley asked. They're a little preoccupied, but mostly. So I've heard. Did you join them? Ashley was tense as she asked it. That's part of where I feel left out. Perhaps I should offer them some assistance. Lighten the load. Provide one less distraction. Kenzie shrugged. You'd better act fast, she said, turning to look at the heroes nearest her, before I slip. I've got you, I told her. The fragile one reached out and touched her. Press... <clears throat> ...was nearest her, before I slip. I've got you, I told her. The fragile one reached out and touched her pressing blood to bare shoulder. She shivered, full body. You'd better restrain me so you don't have any further damsel problems. Some heroes hurried to the task. Kenzie sighed, heavy. She looked at me. I've got to get back to work. Side projects, recording things so people know what they need to know. Don't go touching Chicken Little, I told her. She stared at me for a little too long. Her projection didn't have the helmet on. Byron is on the roof, I said. I know. Insert time jump beat here. I arrived on the rooftop, feeling very much like a third wheel, even as other capes arrived. The sky around us distorted, is lunging to be in close. Portals a short distance away had been distorted to be large, providing huge windows for bist bistas. ...to be in close. Portals a short distance away had been distorted to be large, providing huge windows for Vista's space distortion... Space distortion... Wow, man. ...to be in close. Portals a short distance away had been distorted to be large, providing huge windows for Vista's space distortions. Need anything? I asked. No, 
Byron said. You're content? I asked. He sat on a shielded ventilation duct with Vista beside him. Mostly, he said. Vista elbowed him hard. Her elbow protector clacked hard against his armor. Not anything to do with you, he told her. He pointed. The distance was laced with red, ominous and spreading. I could see the silhouettes of the largest titans. Yeah, I said. The first people have passed out, started dreaming. Lookout's got some data suggesting it's okay. I know, Vista said. We've had some people come by. They had to be carried. But we got them where they wanted to go. I nodded. Where do you want to go? Byron asked. I had five different places I wanted to go that were all important to me, but I really had only one destination. Old headquarters, I told them. Near Hollow Point. It's okay if you ballpark it. I can fly. The sky began to warp. Have you two been dosed? I asked. Not yet. We're worried we'll conk out when it matters. The more points of contact there are, the shorter the amount of time. Riley had a logic to it, I said. We thought we'd need to be able to quickly operate on the most far-flung people, and the people quickest to agree needed to be active for longer, convincing others. So you'll be one of the last? Byron asked. I nodded. I offered a hand. He pulled off his gauntlet and touched my hand. Then he reached over to Vista and pressed his hand to hers. What's your plan? I asked them. My folks, Byron said. Vista's still deciding. I've told her she's welcome to come with. It's a little much, Vista said. I don't want to go home, though. I nodded. Rain's on a similar wavelength. It's not an easy thing to decide. Well, you decided. Old headquarters, is that right? Did I get the location right? That's it, Byron told her. Then there's your door, Vista said. No rush. There it is, I said, not quite ready to leave the roof. It was impulse that drove me, hesitation, as if somehow this was what made it final. Flight through a frozen sky, over a city that seemed frozen and utterly... ...that drove me, hesitation, as if somehow this was what made it final. Flight through a frozen sky, over a city that seemed frozen and utterly still. If there were any lights, I'd be more suspicious they were more to do with the machine army than any trace of humanity. Past the Earth N portal, near Kenzie's place. Down to the Stratford area, going by landmarks that Vista's power squished into odd shapes that made them nearly unrecognizable. I landed on the fire escape. I let myself in, no key needed. A space heater thrummed uselessly. The building was damaged and cold leached into the area. Whiteboards had fallen, plans and dreams now fallen by the wayside. Red from that same crack that had brought down one corner of the building leached in through walls, floor, and hastily erected tarp. Not that I could discount that connections I'd made months ago were helping us get people on board. Not that I could discount that connections I'd made months ago were helping us get people on board now. Okay. Building leached in through walls, floor, and hastily erected tarp. Not that I could discount that connections I'd made months ago were helping us get the people on board now. Natalie was huddled by the space heater wearing her puffy jacket. So, she said. Hey, uh, any issues? She asked. A few. A couple of people surprised me. The people who can't see how this would work. The ones who can. Divided by one question. People. Hmm, she said. 
I don't think I could take a side if I tried. If I could, maybe I'd be less nervous. Are you okay doing this? She seemed for a moment like she might say no. Her forehead creased. No words passed between us for a minute. It's like secret identities, you know? I asked. I don't really... no. No idea what you're talking about. Why do we keep them? It's... Oh, not that kind of inflection. I don't really... no. No idea what you're talking about. Why do we keep them? It's... we need a fallback. Capes need some aspect of our lives that we can turn to when it all goes to shit. So, we keep one sliver or one half of our lives intact, and when worst comes to worst, there's a place we can go for a friendly word, a hug, normalcy. Okay. You didn't have that, though. I did, kind of. Not, not an escape. But there was love and support at the core of it. Just took a little figuring out to realize it was there. And, at the end of the day... Here in Gimmel, I think we kind of forgot we need that sort of thing. That ability to reach out, fall back. I guess. I reached out. Natalie extended her hand below mine. I dropped a fob into her hand. She stared down at it, nodding for a moment, then asked, Do you want me to leave the space heater on? It's battery operated. I can get it, sure. I'll stick around. The floor creaked as she walked over to the door, and the fire escape banged with her boots. I could hear her making her way down to her car through the holes in the wall and floor. I looked out over the water, tinted red, and at the sky, which I imagined glowing redder by the minute. Sveta was somewhere out there, on another shoreline. My duty in this was done. Just a question of waiting. It was up to them now. Okay. That is 20.10. Let's get that saved. 20.10 last. Yes. And 20.10 last. Okay. Saving. All right, time for a trippy dream chapter. Okay, do 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 do. do, do. Let's get you positioned correctly. I think that's about right. Okay. Hail hydrate. All right, here we go. <clears throat> the final chapter. The time has come. Let's freaking do it. Arc 20, last, chapter 11. The text that appeared on my battered and abused flip phone was garbled. As I moved my eye from letter to letter, the prior letter seemed to change. The effect was that I was left trying to interpret a cipher. I couldn't read the name, but I could see the little bubbled picture by the name. The process of moving my eye to that picture brought the text into alignment. Dean inviting me over. The flight path I took felt natural in the moment, but as I thought about the way I'd come, 
I noticed inconsistencies, or alarm bells sounded. Streets didn't line up. Landmarks weren't in the right order. There was a butcher chain that was labeled It's Fucking Meat instead of its proper name, a reference to a joke I'd made with my friends that we'd held onto and repeated every time we'd passed the place. A bank labeled... I'd made with my friends that we'd held onto and repeated every time we'd passed the place. A bank labeled bank and nothing more. More signs with gibberish letters, or images that they couldn't seem to decide on, despite the fact the signs weren't digital. The sky had changed as I flew into it. Dean's place was a five-minute flight away, from our house at the southwestern corner of the city to the towers, the expensive part of downtown, but even though it had been an afternoon when I left the Pelham's lawn, it was evening when I arrived at the penthouse. The message on my phone still flirting with the idea of being gibberish, warned me the doorman was a snitch. Dean had found out when he'd tried to duck out to do an extra patrol. His parents had been called. They'd called the youth guard, and the youth guard had har- had harangued. Dean had found out when he'd tried to duck out to do an extra patrol. His parents had been called. They'd called the youth guard, and the youth guard had harangued the PRT, even though the patrol had been unsanctioned. Easier to fly in. To float up to the balcony, quiet as anything, and reach below the railing, seizing his ankles. He didn't jump. Instead, to a squat, then shifted position again, lying flat on his belly. I was there just the upper half of my head visible above the base of the balcony, fingers at the edge now, decorative metal lattice and panels of glass stretching between the railing and the balcony itself. He was there too, his face inches from mine. I can sense you, even if it's dampened, he said. There was moisture in my eyes. What if I love you really, really hard? Will it get through the dampening? You could try. I scrunched up my face, concentrating. I concentrated on every moment. Tender, trusting, hopeful, angry, mournful. The details that had stuck with me, like the clown nose stain on the white briefs, the moments spent studying, the moments we'd been young and short-sighted, feeling parental pressures, feeling alone, and the resulting moments that had been so sweet in their loneliness because we'd been lonely together. Him and I feeling so distant from everything except each other. I wanted that again so desperately. Wow, he said. Don't you dare make a joke, I told him. It's so tempting. Clock blocker is rubbing off on you. He reached through the railing and put a hand on the side of my face. His thumb wiped at a bead of moisture. You really did look constipated, though, he told me. Wow, Dean, really? I asked. Here I am. I don't think you could even comprehend the shit I went through in the course of getting here. And I really am tapping into some genuine feelings to the point I'm teary-eyed. You jerk, and that's what you've got? In my defense, I'm 17, and Clock Blocker really is a bad influence. Not a defense. Nope, my mom's a lawyer. I know being a teenager isn't a defense. You look beautiful, he told me. Too late, I told him. I grabbed his ankle again, and I lifted it, transferring my grip between my hands so I could navigate the horizontal bars. I did not have enough air for that. You look beautiful, he told me. Too late, I told him. I grabbed his ankle again, and I lifted it, transferring my grip between my hands so I could navigate the horizontal bars that extended along the decorative partling. He started off trying to keep himself vertical, then shifted his grip to trying to ensure he had something to hold on to. After he was completely upside down for a couple seconds, I set him down. He gripped the railing not just with his hands, but both 
arms, hugging it. Feet touched the balcony. It took him another second to laugh, quiet. You're totally a teenager, too, he told me. Woo. I wouldn't have let you fall, I told him. I know. If I thought there was a chance, I would have screamed. I put a hand on the railing and vaulted over. My boots met the concrete pad of the balcony. Dean, for his part, straightened up. Just a little taller than me, but me. I was only sixteen or so. I like the way your hair gets messy when you've been flying hard, he told me. He reached over to the side of my head and plucked at a strand, repositioning it. I reached up for his hand and pressed it against the side of my head, just to have it closer to me. Then, as an extension of the same thought, I drew a bit closer to him, covering half the distance before I hesitated. He hugged me, tight, one hand now at the back of my head, fingers in my messy hair. What's up with you? he asked. It's felt very lonely out there for a long time, I mumbled the words. We can't have that. I shook my head. Tough day? he asked me. Fought two Endbringers, dealt with the Slaughterhouse Nine, um, shopping trip with a girl I met in the hospital, an ex-fallen, a dude that's dating Vista, who might have you beat for looking good in armor, heresy, and a very troubled little girl who should not have been there. Then, you know, ran into the Undersiders and a skitter force-fed me spiders and centipedes at the bank. I said, and a skitter? I don't know. Heresy. And a very troubled little girl who should not have been there. Then, you know, ran into the undersiders and skitter force-fed me spiders and centipedes at the bank. He pulled back from the hug so our faces were close together, and then he kissed me. You don't have spider breath. Oh, that's good, I told him. I was going to invite you to watch TV shows or a movie with me, but now I feel like I should take you to a therapy session. TV show or movie sounds perfect, I told him. We stepped into the expansive two-story two-story penthouse apartment session. TV show or movie sounds perfect, I told him. We stepped into the expansive two-story penthouse apartment and together made our way to the couch. He seemed like he was going to take a seat at one end. Oh my God, why can I not say this? The expansive two-story penthouse apartment, and together made our way to the couch. He seemed like he was going to take a seat at one end of the couch, expecting me to sit next to him. But I laid down, laying down with his front to my back. The remote's on the coffee table, he said. I reached for it and found it too far. I willed for the fragile... No, not here. I took hold of his arm and pulled it around my body, like I was pulling a blanket tight. My back pressed hard against him to get as close to him as I could. I'd rather stay put than move to get the remote. I was pretty sure the television wouldn't be coherent either. Where are your parents? I asked. Having dinner with my father's vice president? I twisted around squirming a bit until I was facing him, him pressed between me and the back of the couch. You really are beautiful, he said. He extricated an arm and used it to fix my... Extricated an arm? He'll hydrate. me and the back of the couch. You really are beautiful, he said. He extricated his an arm, God damn it. me and the back of the couch. You really are beautiful, he said. He extricated an arm and used it to fix my hair, adjusting strands. I miss you when you're not around, you know. The world makes more sense when you're in the room. That's a lie. The world doesn't make sense. 
maybe it just feels like it's kind of nonsense. It's, yeah, maybe it just feels like a kind of nonsense I can handle. Okay. When you're in the room, that's a lie. The world doesn't make sense. Maybe it just feels like a kind of nonsense I can handle. I've been trying to handle things for so long, I think I've lost all objectivity. Loneliness and a world you can't make sense of for what sounds like a long time. Did you get caught in a time warp? Four and a half years passed just like that. Crazy time warp. Do you think you could take off this sweater? He asked. He touched the shoulderless black sweater I was wearing, with wool that was a half-inch thick. Slippery slope there, Dean Stansfield. We don't have to do that. I just want to touch more of you, be closer to you. That's what that is, you dolt. Not like you're talking about. Our faces were close enough for us to kiss, but we didn't. I searched his features. I need something first. Whatever you need. Tell me. How long did you know Amy wasn't well? He exhaled slowly, broke eye contact. Tell me, I asked. I'm trying to figure things out. I'm... I figured there was time. She hates me. I needed to reach out. I needed to get to her, past that initial wall. Give it a few weeks or months. But you knew? And you kept it from me? He nodded. Hurts. Um, and I'm not blaming you, but... I and a bunch of other people got really hurt by that. I'm just a teenager guy, Victoria, he told me. I'm stumbling through so much of this. I do the best I can. I make mistakes, or I get overconfident. I thought maybe I could help her get a handle on her issues before they could ever come up. And then you die before you can. Do you love me? I do. I nodded. I leaned back, using flight to keep myself upright-ish so I could pull it off. I ran my fingers through my hair after. I still wore a black tank. He touched my arm, fingers tracing from shoulder to elbow. Feels like a weird leap to make, talking about heavy stuff like your sister, people getting hurt, me fucking up, moving to this. What do you think this is? I asked. I thought it wasn't going to be anything rude. It's still a weird leap. I've got so many walls up. If you want me to take the barriers away, I need to know I can trust you. He nodded. You didn't tell me your cauldron. His eyes widened. Pretty big betrayal, keeping that from me. So many conversations we had where you implied... You lied... Yeah, I feel like a shithead. Shit heel. A shit heel? What the hell's a shit heel? So many conversations we had where you implied you lied. Yeah. Uh, let me just get to that yeah, too. From me. So many conversations we had where you implied you lied. Yeah, I feel like a shit heel saying it, but is this another thing? Another barrier that gets lifted? That is a shitheel sort of thing to say, Dean. I'm just wondering, what happens next? You're really thinking about sex now? I'm really thinking about us and the future. If I give the right answers, admit to my faults, do you leave and never come back? I'm... I stopped, shaking my head, my head rubbing against the sofa cushion. I'm really, really hoping and praying that this don't come back for decades. Sorry. Then what is this? Resolution? Figuring out where we stand? Whether 80% of me loves you and 20% of me resents you? Or if it's 50-50, which it probably isn't? Or 95 and 5? I couldn't tell you, he said. It's one of the rules. If we say anything, they come after us and take away what they gave. I searched his expression, and I saw the regret, the hurt, how very hard it had been. 
Searching his expression, I saw him in a wholly new light. How clear his skin was, the proportions of his eyes. Even the smell of him, it was subtly different from someone like Annalise. You're a teenager, I said. Mistakes happen. His finger traveled down my arm, shoulder to wrist. Then it reversed direction. It stopped at a scar, the one Mukade's centipede had given me. It passed an abrasion, then reached another scar from Mukade, with skin that rippled around the scar because the acid had burned and the burn. God damn it. You friggin' raw sentences. Direction. It stopped at a scar, the one Mukade's centipede had given me. It passed an abrasion, then reached another scar from Mukade, with skin that rippled around the scar because the acid had burned and the burn had scarred. His expression was sad. He looked so very young, and it shook me, because somehow, in my mind, he had grown up with me. To see him now, he looked faintly smaller. He looked more like one of the students I would have taught in the patrol than someone who would have been beside me. There was insecurity in his eyes. Even the comments, the little details, the faint pushiness that someone a few years older might have matured out of. I leaned forward and gave him a kiss on the forehead. Then I sat up. You can stay, he said. I shook my head. No? If I end up staying, it's because a tragedy happened. I should move on, I told him. Did I do something wrong? I shook my head. Feels like I did. You are perfect because you're in the past. Unchanging. I can keep the best memories and gloss over the worst ones. But you're a teenager, and you'll always be a teenager. I love you, Dean. I love you, too. I picked up my sweater, and I carried it to the balcony. Dean got up from the couch and stepped out of view. I could have flown off, but I wasn't quite sure where to fly. Every place I could go had connotations. Fights had happened in most of those places, or sparring, or patrols. Instead, I stood there, looking out over Brockton Bay. I like your sweater. I turned my head. Swansong leaned into the railing, black makeup smeared around her eyes, almost like a blindfold. Her white hair was short, with bits of black, like she'd wiped her fingers clear of the makeup on it. I held up the sweater. Black. Of course she liked it. I smiled. Want it? She reached out and took it, before slinging it over one shoulder. I glanced past her and saw the apartment we'd shared in Earth Gimmel. No Dean. The ground was only two stories down now, not twenty. Did you get what you needed? She asked me. I expected something entirely different. Oh, did you? She asked me. Making up for lost time? I fought two fucking endbringers in this dream before getting to the good parts. It would be really damn nice if I could just enjoy something simple. Mm-hmm, she murmured. Seeing if... <clears throat> damn nice if I could just enjoy something simple. Mm-hmm, she murmured. Seeing if a bit of vigorous rubbing might make your knight in shining armor shine brighter? Uh, you're fortunate, in a way, she said. Fortunate? Part of your power comes from their analysis of emotion, sentiment. If it didn't, that wouldn't have felt so rich. If you wished, you could experience the most climactic of emotions here, in memories and recordings where that emotion didn't already exist. Okay, hey, let's change the topic. Must we? I've missed seeing you squirm. And if the name Damsel of Distress didn't pip... Different inflection. Hey, let's change the topic. Must we? I've missed seeing you squirm. And if the name Damsel of Distress didn't tip you off... I quite liked stories of knights and dames and evil sorceresses when I was small. 
I didn't expect you to show up in that hallway, I said. You're proving the likes of Tattletale right when she says you're a stereotypical brute. That wasn't a graceful transition. That was blunt. For shame. It was a shock, I told her, ignoring her digressions. Seeing you. She seemed amused. The cretin tried to kill Kenzie. What she thought was Kenzie. When she was talking about you taking her over, I thought it was metaphorical, not a literal wrestling of control. Resting. Resting of control. <clears throat> the cretin tried to kill Kenzie. What she thought was Kenzie. When she was talking about you taking her over, I thought it was metaphorical, not a literal resting of control. She fights me constantly, but the difference between us is that I grew, Ashley said. My idiot sister fights me by doing the opposite. If the screeching half-wit did anything else, anything at all, she wouldn't be so vulnerable. Will you? I think I'd rather not, Ashley said. I wouldn't say I'm content, but I've always been a restless creature, a bird with twisted wings of annihilation. I smiled. If I wasn't restless here, I wouldn't be me, perhaps. I relive some of my greatest hits, I explore, I deal with them. I twisted around to look at where the fingernail pointed with white, painted, painted, not pointed, I relive some of my greatest hits, I explore, I deal with them. I twisted around to look at where the fingernail, painted with white and black, was pointing. At first, I thought it was the inside of the apartment. It was the window. In the four different panels of window that made up the access to the balcony, I could see five reflections of Ashley, all long-haired, some with clawed fingers. Are they a problem? new experiences that they can't relate to or reach. They linger behind or at the fringes. I'm fine. I worry about Kenzie and about you and the others. In that order? Absolutely. Can we walk? I nodded. I floated down to the ground beneath the balcony. Ashley used a single burst of her power. The reality around us shuddered at the power use. I thought about commenting on that but it felt out of place. I can't help but notice that Kenzie found her way here, she said, one narrow eyebrow arched, her tone dangerously conversational. Could feel some mouth noise in that. I can't help but notice that Kenzie found her way here, she said, one narrow eyebrow arched, her tone dangerously conversational. Whatever I do, if I include her, if I leave her behind, it feels like a damning wrong choice. If she was the wrong... If I include her, if I leave her behind, it feels like a damning wrong choice. If she was the one thing I focused on, I think I'd still get it wrong, but she's not, and the end result feels like the worst of both worlds. I talked to her. She found someone on her wavelength. A darkness ma Yeah. Let them meet. She's strong. She's determined. She'll find her way. But I worry. As do I, my friend. We walked through Hollow Point, past broken windows and empty streets and stores. We stopped at a clothing store, and Ashley pointed at some articles that were still on the mannequin. I opened the door, wanting to get closer, but when I did, there was only darkness within. More damsels appeared in the glass, peering at us. One of them reached out to scrape the interior of the glass with clawed fingertips. Ashley seemed almost bored with it. Let's keep walking, she said. I nodded. When she walked past me, however, she was careful to skirt my shadow. I looked down, and I took a step back. When I did, the shadow remained on the sidewalk, while my own shadow followed me. I stepped forward again, and I scuffed it with my toe. 
It came away, like a smudge on glass. Below the pavement was grass and a fallen plank, and the plank had yellow graffiti on it. I remembered that graffiti. Your plan, it's spreading faster. Pollution. I was spreading it more intentionally during the ugly parts. Maybe it'll make a difference. Or reduce the chances I'm stuck in here for hundreds of years reliving those parts. It'd be nice if people like my uncle could hold on to memories of time with his son for another hundred years while that bad stuff disappeared. Let's hope, she said. She touched a window. I looked through it. Inside was what could have been a bed and breakfast. <clears throat> Let's hope, she said. She touched a window. I looked <clears throat> through it. Inside was what could have been a bed and breakfast, or hotel room. In a chair was a body, head obliterated, the white carpet beneath the chair soaked with blood. Not mine. Not my recollection or memory. Ashley sighed. Turning away in the same moment, a lone damsel stepped into the faint set of reflections in the glass. I gave it a lingering look, then moved on. Have you seen the others? Wait, who said that? Okay, she, like, okay, got it. Man. Not clear, look. then moved on. Have you seen the others? Sveta is hard to reach. It's an imperfect connection, distorted. I watched from a distance. For an instant, we were in the crystal landscape again. What had been red and black was so lit up with white flickers that it was luminescent. Seeing swan song amid it, it looked like it was entirely her element, bright, chaotic, and intense. I saw Sveta and Rain earlier. Rain's managing, supporting Love Lost and Colt, and being supported in turn. You already mentioned Kenzie. On the other side of a ravine, talking was difficult, but we managed it. Oh, God damn it! I got it backwards. <clears throat> Victoria, Victoria, Victoria. Okay, Victoria asked, have you seen the others? God damn it. Where is it? I saw Sveta. Sveta is... It's in the glass. <clears throat> I gave it a lingering look then moved on. Have you seen the others? Sveta is hard to reach. It's an imperfect connection, distorted. I watched from a distance. For an instant, we were in the crystal landscape again. What had been red and black was so lit up with white flickers that it was luminescent. Seeing swan song amid it, it looked like it was entirely her element. Bright, chaotic, and intense rain earlier. Rain's managing, supporting love lost and cult, and being supported in turn. You already mentioned Kenzie. On the other side of a ravine. Talking was difficult, but we managed it. And Tristan? I asked her. We were plunged into a ruined city. She shook her head. No? Too far to reach. Connections are broken, and you're not the only one pos oh, poisoning the paths plunged into a ruined city. She shook her head. No? Too far to reach. Connections are broken, and you're not the only one poisoning the paths. It makes it harder. Which raises the question, I said. Does it? Will this work? Does she realize she's losing? She's realized. What do you think we're moving between scenes... Oh, why? Will this work? Does she realize she's losing? <clears throat> she's realized. 
Why do you think we're moving between scenes so fast? She asked me. It's... why? If this were water, it would be churning, she said, looking out over the landscape of lightning in the shape of crystals. Powerful people are being pulled out, one by one. I drew in a breath. I felt dizzy when I realized what she was saying. I suppose I'll see you again one day. Perhaps my contrarian sister will cede all ground and I'll give you a call after. Perhaps she'll find a middle ground and accept some parts of me. Or maybe you'll die, sixty years from now, and you'll be recorded in the annals of this place. It's not Valhalla. It's not hell either, not quite. It's a last test, a question mark drawn out over hundreds or thousands of years. I don't... Look, just in case there isn't time... Shit. Look, you understand this place as well as anyone. There's still unanswered questions. So many. Titan Fortuna was drilling. What was she drilling for? What was she doing and why? I don't know, my dear. I know the person within the Titan found a kernel of strength, and she managed to send Valkyrie to where you needed her. Valkyrie used her power once, then returned to Fortuna's side. But the drilling... I can't see. I can't go there. I do hope you find the answer. Damn it, I swore. Shit. Tarnation, she told me. Be happy. I do believe we won. I drew in a breath to respond. Insert time jump beat here. I gasped for breath, and that gasp seemed to only fill my lungs to ten percent. Easy does it, easy. The woman who knelt beside me wore a winter jacket and was middle-aged. I was in an unfamiliar room, one I'd chosen. It was the most intact room in the building that we'd made our headquarters in. My cell phone. I'd placed it over top of my chest, just to be sure the signal would reach. It slid from my chest and onto the bed as I tried to sit up. You've been in a kind of stasis for more than twelve hours, the woman said. Your heart rate was slowed. Your breathing adjusted. I know, I said. The act of speaking made my chest kind of hurt. I felt like I'd been coughing a lot, or had a pressure on my chest that had been relieved, but that I hadn't fully adjusted to. I kind of defined the loose idea. Oh, she said. You're going to be grog... Groggy. Wow. Why did I think it was groggy? Groggy. I kind of defined the loose idea. Oh, she <coughs> said. Oh, God damn it. I kind of defined <coughs> the loose idea. Oh, she said. You're going to be groggy and dehydrated. Drink. She had a water bottle. I had a million questions, but I put them aside. I drank. As I did, I swung my legs over the side of the bed. They re recommend resting for twenty minutes before standing. Adjust. Let your heart rate creep up to normal. Your legs will be shaky, and I can't guarantee I can lift you back onto the bed if you fall. I eased myself to a standing position, relying on flight to get myself upright again. How many are awake? I asked. A handful. We're going in the same general order that was established before. The first people to accept the treatment will be the first to awaken. Okay. Thank you, I told her. You really shouldn't stand or... Or fly? I asked. I'll manage. I need to get on top of things. I need to make sure this went okay. I'll manage, I told her. Really. Thank you. Kenzie was a concern. There were others. Too many swords of... Swords? What the fuck? Swords. Jesus. Thank you. Sword? Kenzie God. was a concern. There were others. Too many swords of Damocles had been hanging in the sky, poised to drop on us. What about your things? I turned to look. My stuff was sitting beside the bed. Costume top, crusty with blood, armor, decorations. I'd changed just before settling in. I could bring them with me, the woman said. I've got four more people to check on around here. 
I used flight to help me bend over, and the act of straightening still made all the blood rush to my head. Not something I was used to when my power normally made me immune. I gathered it up in my arms. I got it. Thank you again, I told her. She smiled tightly, and then she nodded. I paused, then turned. Do you want any of this? Some of it's bloody and gross, but, like... I pulled the hood decoration free. The only decoration where none of the spikes had broken off. She took it. I opened the door, pulling on a spare coat I'd left behind in the headquarters, and I let myself out into the hallway, where a cold wind... Where a cold... Oh my god damn it. Stop it. Stop it. I opened the door, pulling on a spare coat I'd left behind in the headquarters, and I let myself into the hallway, where a cold wind breezed in through a part of wall that was missing. I flew out through the hole, over the crack in reality. When I looked at the crystal below, I could see the flashes, the light and the darkness. But there was no red glow, no feeling of danger. There was just activity, scrambling mess. If they wanted us, they would have to start from scratch. Too much of the old data would be too hard to use or reuse or extrapolate from. Still floating over the crack, I let the costume fall, dropping from my arms to the chasm. The breastplate provided the weight that helped the bundle fly straight down into the crevice where the water still flowed in from the ocean, frothing too small to make out before it was even halfway gone, then gone forever. I wouldn't be giving them any more of me, not like I had. You're going, I tried before wincing. Breathing and speaking was still hard, and it had nothing to do with the fighting last night, only the long and heavy sleep. You're going to have to work with me, fragile one. I know powers that don't get used can get cranky, but I've kind of gone above and beyond on multiple fronts. Water crashed against a fallen building below me. Go easy on me, huh? I asked. I was looking for fires, for cracks in reality. There were only the tears left behind from the old teacher-assisted fallen attack on the portal devices. Everything was deathly quiet but for the sounds of wind and water. As if to test, to give the fragile one a chance to respond, I pushed out, letting my force field unfold. It swept over my skin, extended over my clothes. It went no further. No sudden movements, nothing involuntary, no apparent mind of its own. I saw three cars on the road in my long trip back to the headquarters, people roving about, following coordinates to meet and recover capes. I had to fly low to pass through a portal. I'd worn comfortable clothes to sleep, and I wore a coat now, and I was glad for the force field that had no extra wind resistance. With the rush and the fear, paradoxical as it was, I felt very much like I had on my very first flight. On that flight, it had been all the possibilities ahead of me that had spooked me. I'd been hopeful, because there were so many promises, so many doors open to me. Now, I felt much the same. A possibility that things had worked out? I was more scared than I had been when I'd thought Chris had scuttled our very last option. Past the portal, the old cauldron facility loomed. Beaten, battered, possibly unrecoverable. I flew in through a hole in the wall Dragon had made. To see the rubble and the signs of battle, I felt more like twelve years had passed, not twelve hours. I still had responsibilities. In the event that this all worked out, my goal and plan had been to leave Kenzie in the care of the Wardens, and she would be my first stop when I arrived. She would know the particulars. But Kenzie, I knew, had gone out of her way to dose herself. I made my way to the right floor, then down the mastermind hallway. 
the area where we'd kept du <clears throat> But Kenzie, I knew, had gone out of her way to dose herself. I made my way to the right floor, then down the Mastermind's hallway, the area where we'd kept Dinah close to Tattletail and Riley and all of our other planners. Kenzie's workshop was humming along. I passed by monitors, though I knew better than to touch Tinker stuff, and bent down to look at lists and maps. I sighed. In the back room, I found the chicken tenders, Roman, Juliet, and Kenzie. Kenzie lay on a cot, separate from all the others. She could have curled up next to Chicken Little or Candy, but, if I remembered right, those people would have been knocked out already. Maybe it was good she hadn't, lonely as it seemed. I pulled a blanket over her. Any ideas? I turned my head. Tattletail had come from the little kitchen... over her. <clears throat> Any ideas? I turned my head. Tattletail had come from the little kitchen area with a cup of coffee in her hands. She wore civilian clothes, and her hair was tied up in a ponytail. Ideas for... I feel like saying they're grounded literally for life, and that I will hire people to ensure it sticks. It still lacks impact. I smiled. I can't take a belt to their asses because, well, illegal. And shitty. But how do you punish a gang of idiots like this? I don't know, I said. I looked over the sleeping kids. Are they coming to... Oh. I don't know, I said. I looked over the sleeping kids. Are they coming to wake them up? Shortly. Next couple of hours. They're going down lists to be sure they get everyone, even though we've got safety measures. Mostly everyone. They're still debating about the monsters. I looked down at Kenzie and thought of Ashley. You could cry, I said. I gave Tattletail a look. Hmm? Just, like, actually show them how very upset you actually are? Might make the decent ones feel bad. I am not much of a crier, she said. Nerve them, probably, for just that reason. But they're resistant to bullshit, so, you know... I could really actually cry, Tattletail said, while looking down at Chicken Little. Don't worry about that. I nodded. Didn't go under. Couldn't. It's okay, I said. You've been following what's going on? Actually, Tattletail said. I've been going out of my way to not pay attention. For the first time in years, I don't have the slightest fucking idea what's going on when it comes to the machine army. <sighs> Bigger breath. Really, Tattletail said. I've been going out of my way to not pay attention. For the first time in years, I don't have the slightest fucking idea what's going on when it comes to the machine army, Saint, the Titans. Don't give me a look that suggests you know anything. It's lovely. My power needs information to put pieces together, and I don't know jack shit, and it's the first vacation I've had in five years. Huh. And if you start asking questions or using me as your little exposition device, setting all that machinery permanently into motion- oh, prematurely. Shit, and it's the first vacation I've had in five years. Huh. Oh, uh, there, okay. Shit, and it's the first vacation I've had in five years. Huh. And if you start asking questions or using me as you're setting all that machinery prematurely into motion, I may actually murder you, or I'll sick the worst heartbroken on you. No need to worry about that. You did good, Tattletail, I said. You deserve a break. Sure. You too, I hope. Want to, like, grab a coffee in the cafeteria? I asked her. Might have to duck out as people start waking up or showing... Mm. 
Want to, like, grab a coffee in the cafeteria? I asked her. Might have to duck out as people start waking up or showing off, but... We're not friends, Vicky. Sure, I told her, rolling my eyes. So, as not friends, do you want to dream up punishments for kids over coffee? I'm ravenous. She looked down at the cup she was already holding, then pitched it into the garbage. Rachel kludged this together, and it's so strong it makes my eyes hurt. Fine. Fine, I said, with a note of easy humor and a lack of guard I hadn't let myself feel in a long, long time. Like I could have laughed as I said it. I'm going to redo that. And a lack of guard I hadn't let myself feel in a long, long time. Like I could have laughed as I said it. Humor and a lack of guard I hadn't let myself feel in a long, long time. Like I could have laughed as I said it. Mm, I'm going to redo the whole thing. Makes my eyes hurt. Fine. Fine, I said, with a note of easy humor and a lack of guard I hadn't let myself feel in a long, long time, like I could have laughed as I said it. Okay, that's it. It's done. Holy shit. My god. Wow. I... I don't even know what to say. 20.11. Last. Alright. Oh, man. Well, I won't be streaming these recordings, at least, for a little while. Um... Yeah. It, well, I don't know if I'll stream it, but I gotta edit for a while. Um... I'm helping out the editors so that we get the, get this finished in a reasonable amount of time. Um, I'm probably going to start doing... I know I've mentioned this several times already, but I'm going to actually start doing Wildermyth uh, streams sometime soon. <coughs> um, so there's that. That'll do some narration stuff for me. Um, what else? Oh yeah, and then once uh, once we are finally ready to air the last chapter... I will record it uh, and edit it all in more or less one go. Um, I'll probably stream that one. And then that'll be it. Wow. I, I'm not going to do my big long speech, but this has been... This has been like eight years of my life. <laughs> oh, man. Well... Until I see you again, see you later.